what up, what up, what up, what up? So I want to take a moment just to share a verse of scripture with you and just a, a brief testimony about the amazing, the amazing God that I love and serve. Um, I have recently um, gotten a, a great opportunity, uh, employment opportunity, that is um, without a doubt more of a ministry opportunity than it is a financial blessing. Granted, it is financially an amazing blessing, but the opportunity um, just to share the love of Christ, to, to be a light in the midst of a place that desperately needs it is phenomenal. So in the beginning stages of this, I was extremely excited about the opportunity and my focus was, was very, very direct and understanding what God had given me this door for. But before I knew it, I, I, without even recognizing it, the subtlety of the enemy kind of shifted me just a little bit. Not a lot. It wasn't enough that it was, you know, super obvious, it, you know, instantaneously. But it was one of those things where it was a gradual shifting of my perception and and the uh, the mission that God had sent me to do has sent me to do. And uh, this morning. The Holy Spirit reminded me of why he gave me this door and why he gave me this opportunity. And I want to share a verse of scripture real quick. This is out of the book of Matthew. It says, Enter ye at the straight gate, or the narrow gate. So enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. As I began to ponder on this scripture this morning, I began to see that, that the path, you know, people have this perception of Jesus that you can just say a prayer and from there on out you're, you're, you're done. It's all good. You're going to die and go to heaven. But if you go down a few more verses... Uh, that was verses chapter 7 verses 13 and 14 but if you go down to chapter 21 and this is a scripture that's read a lot but I don't know if we really understand it most of the time it says not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven many will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Another word for iniquity would be lawlessness. It's disobedience. So as I begin to think about this path, it's a narrow path. And it says there are very few that find it. You know, because broad is the gate. Broad is the path. Wide is the gate that leads to, to, to death, to destruction. And there's many that go in that way. But it's as we begin to walk this, this path with Jesus, as we begin to walk this path with Christ, it's so easy for the enemy just to slip in, like he did with Adam and Eve, you know, to slip in a little word. Did God really say? And you begin to just look away just a little bit. And as you think about it, if you were walking on a really narrow path, and you're walking on this path, and I have to really be focused to stay on this path, if I just shift just a little bit, before I know it, that path is out of my sight. It's out of my view. And then I become a lost person wandering. And the enemy is going to bring every distraction he can to keep me from going back to the way, the truth, and the life, which is Jesus Christ. So if you are on a path with Christ and you feel like you've lost your focus, lost your purpose, lost your destination that God has given you to, to fulfill and to... to um, to walk out. I just want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, for each and every person that might listen to this message. I pray, Lord God, that you would convict us under righteousness. Holy Spirit, I, I ask you to move mightily by your power, by your love, by your grace, that you would bring back to remembrance all these things in which the Word of God, which Jesus has said, he is the Word, the living Word, made flesh. I thank you, Father for the love that you have for us. I thank you, Jesus, for the, 
the prayers that you pray for us. Your word says you intercede for the saints. You, you live to intercede for the saints. You died to give us eternal life. So we thank you, Father, right now that you would bring us back, Lord God, that you would realign our focus, Lord God, that you would shift our perspectives, Father, back to you, back to the love of God, back to the mission of God, that we would be living epistles, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. And as we hunger and thirst for righteousness, your word says that we shall be filled. Your word says, Father, that if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things should be added unto us. So, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for each and every person that may hear the sound of my voice. I pray for them to come down to you, Father. Come to your altar. Come to your throne. Come to your presence. Come to the place of grace, Father, that let love, Lord God, cast out fear. But perfect love cast out fear, Father. In the name of Jesus, I just thank you and I praise you. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have an amazing rest of the day, night, or whatever it is where you are. Peace, peace.